This lesson is how to make common denominators for fractions. Okay, so let's say that Hayden and Rhett both ordered a mini pizza, and Hayden ate five eighths of his mini pizza, and Rhett ate seven tenths of his mini pizza. Well, what if I wanted to figure out who ate more of his mini pizza? I could look at the numerators and see if one of them ate more slices than the other. Well, Rhett sure ate more slices, but his slices are smaller because look, the denominators aren't the same. Rhett's pizza was cut into 10 smaller pieces, whereas Hayden's pizza was only cut into eight pieces. So the pieces were bigger but he only ate five of them. Oh man. Well, what if we compared it to one half? Maybe one of them is less than half and one of them is greater than half. Well, half of eight would be four. So Hayden ate five eighths, so that's more than half. And half of 10 would be five and Rhett ate seven, so that's more than half too. Ah, oh, how can we compare these fractions? Who do we know ate more? Well, this is where our study on multiples is going to come in handy. Check it out. We've got 8 and 10. These denominators are not shared. They are not the same. They are not what we would call common. So let's list the multiples of 8 and see if we can find some numbers that would match that we could turn into a new denominator. So we've got 8, 16, 24, so that's 8 times 1, 8 times 2, 8 times 3, 8 times 4 is 32, 8 times 5 is 40. That should be enough for now. Usually I say do the first five multiples, and then if you have to go back and do more because you haven't found anything that matches, then you can. So let's list our multiples of 10. Ooh, counting by 10s, we can do this. 10 times 1, 10 times 2. 10 times 3, 10 times 4, ooh, notice anything? And 10 times 5, just to finish it out. Anyone notice that we have got a 40 here and a 40 here? That means those are the same or they are shared. They have them in common. So we will circle that least common multiple. LCM stands for the least common multiple. So out of all of the multiples of 8 and 10, the least one that they have in common is 40. They probably have some more down the road, like 80, but for now, we can work with the smallest number possible because it'll be the most friendly number in the long run. So now what do we do with that 40? Well, we want to make an equivalent fraction with 40 as the new denominator for both of our original fractions. That way, they'll have the same size pieces of the pizza and we'll know who ate more. So we're not changing the value. We're making an equivalent fraction. It's still the same amount. We're just putting in a new denominator. It's like putting new pants on the fraction. So 40 are our new pants, our new denominator. Okay, so now where we learned about making equivalent fractions is really going to come into handy. Check it out. You know how to do this. How did we get from 8 to 40? Well, we multiplied by 5. And whatever you do to the denominator, you have to do to the numerator. So we'll multiply that by 5 as well. And 5 times 5 is going to get us our new numerator. 25. Now there's a lot going on here, so I'm going to box this up just so it's separate and I can come back to it later and see it pretty clearly. All right, let's work with Rhett's fraction now. To get from 10 to 40, multiplied by 4. And whatever you do to the denominator, you have to do to the numerator. So we will also multiply by 4, and 7 times 4 is 28. 
Now I've got two fractions that I can compare a lot more naturally. They're friendly fractions because they have the same denominator. So now I can compare 25 fortieths and 28 fortieths. So Hayden ate 25 fortieths of a pizza and Rhett ate 28 fortieths of a pizza. So who ate more? Greater than and less than here? Rhett, he ate 28 pieces that were 40th size, and Hayden ate 25 pieces that were 40th size. Since we know that these new fractions with 40 as their denominators are just equivalent fractions to our originals for Hayden and Rhett, we can also use what we found out about the 40th fractions to go back to our original problem, is 5 eighths more or less than 7 tenths? Well, it's going to be the same answer that we got previously. 7 tenths, which is like 28 fortieths, is greater than 5 eighths, which is like 25 fortieths. OK, let's try another one. Say we're wanting to compare 5 twelfths with 1 third. 5 twelfths of a pizza with 1 third of a pizza. Well, our numerators aren't the same, so that doesn't really help us. Our denominators aren't the same either, so again, that doesn't help us. And if we use our halfway mark as a checkpoint to see, well, 5 twelfths is less than half, because 6 twelfths would be exactly half. And 1 third is less than half, because 1.5 or 1 and a half would be half of 3. So they're both less than a half. So, really, the only way that we can compare these fractions is by changing their pants. <laughs> we need new denominators. So, let's get to work. We've got 12 and we've got 3. We are going to need to list the multiples of both of these. And we'll see if they have any multiples in common. Ooh, counting by 12, this is a tough one. Here we go. 12 times 1. 12 times 2, 12 times 3, 12 times 4, 12 times 5. And we'll stop there because usually we have what we need um, by the time we do 5 multiples. Okay, now let's do our multiples of 3. 3, 6, 9, 12. <gasps> ding, 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 ding! We have a match! So we don't even need to go on anymore because we see 12 is our least common multiple. It doesn't matter if we already had it. It's still the least common multiple. Sometimes that'll happen and that's actually really nice. So that least common multiple is going to turn into our lowest common denominator. Okay, so let's set up are equivalent fractions. Now hold on, do you notice something? We've got a 12, but we already had a 12 to start with. So do we need to go through the whole process of figuring out a new numerator when we know it's just gonna be five, what we started with? <laughs> no, no we do not. All we need is to change this one fraction. So let's get to work. To get from 3 to 12, you multiply by 4. Whatever you do to the denominator, you have to do to the numerator. So multiply that by 4 as well. And 1 times 4 is 4. So that's the new fraction that we're working with. Now we can compare 5 twelfths compared with 4 twelfths. All right, let's compare 5 twelfths compared with 4 twelfths, which we know is the same as what we started with over here, 1 third. They're just equivalent fractions. So if we have 12th size pieces, then who had more pieces? They're the same size. So now we can look at the quantity, which is the numerator. So we're comparing, whoops, we're comparing our 5 and our 4. And which is greater? I think it's pretty clear. 
5 twelfths is greater than 4 twelfths, which also means that 5 twelfths is also greater than 1 third. So here's your task. What you need to do is you need to come up with a problem to trade with a discussion group member of yours tomorrow. You choose two fractions, not improper or mixed, just normal fractions like we saw today, but they can't be the same fractions that we used in this lesson. Your fractions need to have two different denominators. You need to find the least common multiple of those two denominators, which will then turn into your lowest common denominator or least common denominator, which you will use for making equivalent fractions so that you can compare. You're going to be trading with someone tomorrow, but you need to have all of this work in your how-to book so that you know if they're correct or if they messed up, you'll be able to help them figure out how or where they mess up. So you have to be the expert on this. This is not a chance for you to try to stump a group mate because you have to be able to do this too. You've got to come prepared to explain why you think that your answer is correct and maybe your teammate's incorrect if you get a different answer from them tomorrow. So be creative, have fun, and I can't wait to see what you come up with tomorrow.